Hello, before we jump into anything, I want to talk about a few things. So here is the skill tree, okay? This is a dexterity stacker. We stack as much dexterity as possible and uh, we will get more totems, more life, more damage because there are a lot of interactions that we will talk in this video. Also, I want to say that this build has uh, a lot of changes. Many of you might know that you need a rain of splinter jewels, but I noticed that the price for this jewel pumped up a lot. It's very expensive, especially on Lickstart. So I adapted this build to not include that jewel. I wanted to make this build effective yet cheap. So it's uh, accessible to all types of players, even noob ones. I, I wanted everyone to be able to play it. And I can guarantee you, with uh, this setup, you will be able to clear tier 16 maps easy. Easy, no problem. You can do guardian maps, you can farm guardian, you can even kill the shaper with this uh, build. But if you want to go for high-end uh, uber boss farming, you will need a lot of investment. But who cares about uber bossing? Trust me, I do a lot of uber bosses and they are like a gamble. So you don't, don't care about that, you just want to do your Atlas content in tier 16 maps. And this build is excellent in all areas. Okay, so this is one thing. There is no Reign of Splinters in my build. Also in some builds, you see this is a timeless jewel, we will talk about it. Some builds uh, for Siege Ballista Dexterity Stacking use the timeless jewel here. But uh, for the last 4 leagues I noticed that uh, this jewel placed here is very expensive. <laughs> That's why I moved here. So I put my timeless jewel in this area because they were very cheap. Sadly, I posted a video two weeks ago <coughs> showing my node 909 and <coughs> why you should place your timeless jewel here. And prices bumped up. Usually, this jewel I paid like 100 chaos, one divine orb. After I made the video, this jewel it's around 30 divines at the moment. So, yeah, prices bumped up the loft for this area. <coughs> So this was my advantage at least that I could focus my timeless jewel in this area and not here. Here the timeless jewels were maybe are still are expensive because uh, there are a lot of types of dexterity stacking you know we will use it totems but uh, many builds need it and they prefer this area but in crucible league they rework this area and uh, this change uh, things a little one moment. Okay as you see they added uh, <coughs> these nodes bow attacks fire an additional arrow and uh, attacks fire an additional projectile for ballistas because they are an attack based skill gem you get both so you get two extra arrows here you have two options either you go manually and spec these points or you go with a thread of hope a jewel this is more convenient because saves you a lot of points but we will talk about it so yeah I moved the timeless jewel here and I went for dexterity. I also removed rain of splinters. I also have some variations as you will see. I like to use this high risk truth J amulet. Also they added this new uh, jewel ancestral visions which uh, in this particular build you can get elemental elemental immunity for free <laughs> because you have a lot of spell suppression thanks to this node here which uh, uh, the more dexterity you have, the more uh, spell suppression chance you have. And you have tons of spell suppression. You can use this then to cap your elemental elements for free. So you can remove purity of elements. But if you're leak starting, you will need this. Let's jump into it. It's a great build. Let's see it. Let's go. Okay, let's start with the items. What's good about this build is that most of our items consist in uniques. So you will need to buy a lot of unique items, which is great. Because if you had a lot of rares, some builds require a lot of rare items which can give you headaches because you need to calibrate your resistances, your life, your other stats. But if you have a build with a lot of uniques, it's very easy to make it. Okay, so let's start. Uh, let's understand uh, better this build. So your main uh, component is, is this bow. Iron Commander. This one gives you one extra totem for each 200 dexterity you have. So as you stack dexterity here, you see, you will get more totems. At the moment I have a, a 1800 and this translates into 17 totems. You can get more than this of course, but you will need to invest more money. 
So this is one of the core items of this build. So this is essential. It's a core item. Before you start uh, swapping from your leak start into this build, you will need this bow. So keep that in mind. Next, we have this one. 50% increased dexterity, which is nice. <coughs> Uh, but keep in mind the reads here if strength is higher than intelligence so go here and check see strength is higher than intelligence sometimes intelligence will be higher and you will not get this bonus so be sure you have uh, more strength than intelligence uh, means uh, you're more stupid you know more strength than intelligence okay i tried to make a joke please laugh okay we have now uh, here two maximum life per 10 intelligence it's okay not uh, not great but let's read here 1% increased elemental damage per 10 dexterity. So this gives more damage per dexterity you have. It's insanely good. Let's move to the chest. Don't worry about the corruption at the moment. Uh, so this chest gives flat increased dexterity, which is great. And uh, last line, increased damage per 15 dexterity. So it adds up the more dexterity you have, the more damage will do. It's great. Now here, read here, it says 1-2 uh, call damage per 10 dexterity. Again. You have a lot of dexterity, you do shit ton of damage. We move to the boots. Here we're interested in the in, uh, last line. Two maximum life per 10 dexterity. Which is great, because I have uh, tons of dexterity, it means I get a lot of free life. At the moment I have uh, over 5000 life. <coughs> These boots help a lot. Yeah, let's remove the boots and let's see how much life we have. Okay, so almost 1000 life, just from these boots, which is great. For the gloves, you will need this one, it's called Hrim Sorrow. Uh, this one's you mostly interested in this line, says 100 of physical damage converted to cold damage. This makes all our physical damage uh, deal cold damage, which will become an elemental attack. These gloves are very easy. You can uh, also buy some rare gloves with uh, some implicit, but I personally prefer these gloves. They are unique, they are pretty cheap. You can get this uh, on leak start for one kiosk, two kiosk. <coughs> so, Let's go with this one. <coughs> uh, you can even get double corruptions. I have one in my stash. One moment. Ooh, so I bought this one. Look, I have increased attack speed and critical strike chance. This will boost my damage a lot. I forgot to equip it, but no problem. Now for the rings, you want to have rare rings with uh, as much dexterity as possible and some life and some resistances. So here again, you want dexterity, life, resistances. Here again. Dexterity life resistances. <coughs> you should focus upon leak start on resistances, life and dexterity. That's all. Later, when you are rich as fuck because of my guide, you will buy rings uh, with synthesize implicit. There's a synthesize implicit that says increase dexterity. That's very expensive. That ring will be over 30 divines, 30, 50 divines. But that's best in slot. These rings are very cheap. For this one, I pay 2 chaos. For this one, I pay 5 chaos. Okay, for the amulet, you will want this, Astra Mantis. It's a new amulet. <laughs> As you can see, it requires level 20. You can use this while leveling. This amulet gives flat attributes, which will solve uh, your problems while keeping gear, because some uh, skill gems require you to have more uh, intelligence or uh, strength. If you equip dips, you won't have any problem. Also, that flat dexterity helps you here. Let's remove this. As you see, look. From one uh, 1588 to that's a lot so you will want this amulet later when you want to mid max this further you will go for this amulet which uh, gives me roughly the same dexterity look at my dexterity 1860 okay so it's pretty much the same but i get much more benefits look here i get critical strike multiplier i get a level 30 precision skill which gives me a lot of critical strike chance bow attacks have cooling strike so basically i have a seven link because i get a free cooling strike uh, this is overpowered as fuck also precision has a 100 percent discount on mana reservation this amulet it's great anointed with charisma or something that reduces mana reservation so you can use that precision skill but for the moment you will use this amulet because it's great don't worry about the level requirement or that is cheap this is great try to buy one with uh, more uh, tool attributes so you get more dexterity you know for the belt upon leak start you won't find one with increased dexterity synthesized implicit that's why you will buy this shit it's called Cyclopean Coil. Try to buy one with increased attributes as much as possible and you equip it. Uh, this uh, will help you a lot. If 
Uh, it's very early into the league start. Just buy a normal belt that has life, dexterity, flat dexterity, and some resistances. Later, uh, as uh, the league progresses, you can buy this Cyclopean coil. And later, when you are rich, you can buy one with synthesized implicit. I have another guide in which I craft one, so you can see how to craft yourself such a belt. You might want to see it. I'll put it in the description of this video. Okay, for the flask, for the flask, you don't have to worry. Uh, for the life flex, I always like to go like this. You go instant recovery and uh, immunity to bleeding and corrupted blood. I use this uh, on most of my builds. So again, you roll it for instant recovery and uh, corrupted blood immunity and bleeding immunity. It's best. For the rest, you can use whatever you like. Don't worry about this. You can buy it later. Dying Sun, it's not uh, uh, something essential, you know, upon leak start. You can get a diamond flask, a sulfur flask, a movement speed flask and also um, a defensive flask. You know, maybe more armor or more evasion rating. Both are good. So don't worry about this. Yeah, go buy these items and then we'll move to the next section, which are the gems. Okay, let's talk about the gem setup. We'll go to Lily. Some of the gems you can equip it right away, for example. Here in the boots I have my guard skill and um, movement skill um, setup. This you can buy directly from Lily. Okay, so our first setup it's uh, like this. You will go to her and take dash. You will get a second wind. Uh, this one, you will get a steel skin. This one and you get a life tap. Okay, so this you will suck it into the boots. So it's movement skill related. I like to put it in the boots. It's easier to remember. It's easy to get this socket combination because the boots has um, a dexterity base. Uh, you can force uh, the colors. You know, you put the item here. Let's say you have this. Also, if it's corrupted, doesn't matter. If it's corrupted, you can go here and just force it for sockets. See, gets for sockets. If you need, uh, for example, one to be in red, you write here red. At least one red socket. Craft. Okay, now we will socket this. You see it's level 1, doesn't matter, you will still get the benefit. I like to put my guard skill on left click and my movement skill, which is dash, on spacebar. So you can go here to options and it's input. And you can see, use bounce skill 2, I set up to spacebar. This is uh, because in most of the games that I play, spacebar is used for jumping and stuff like that. And it's easy to remember. In all my builds, I use movement skill on spacebar. If you want to do this, it's great. If you don't want to do this, it's also great. Uh, let's go back to Lily. Let's buy the next setup. The next setup will be for the bow. Okay, so you need to buy in this order. First, you will buy life, life tap. This gem um, will uh, use life instead of mana. Because we reserve 100% of our mana, we will need to use life. So we start with life tap. The other one is the golem. Flame golem boosts your damage summon flame golem next you want um, a frenzy so you buy frenzy from lily it's uh, this one you also buy cast on critical strike okay it's this one and you want the curse to apply okay and we had here a mark it's here and you buy this you socket everything i already have them so it doesn't matter if it's level 1 because they will level up pretty fast. I'll explain how they work. As you can see, <clears throat> you press Frenzy. And when you hit an enemy, there's a chance that that enemy gets cursed. Also, it will automatically resummon your Flame Golem. Your Flame Golem might die during your maps, but you resummon him so easy, so you will always have him up and you get the benefit. So you put this into your bow. Now we move to the gloves. For the gloves, I have this setup. You will buy a portal gem. This you cannot buy from Lily. You need to go to the trade website and buy a portal gem. And you link it to this. Cast on death. This is a quality of light uh, gem setup. When you, when you die, the uh, portal will appear exactly in the position you died. And when you return to the map, you will go right there. You don't have to walk from the start to the place where you died. This will save you a lot of time. Because on leak start, people die a lot. They don't have their proper gear and people die a lot. If you can uh, buy a portal gem or find one in your maps, please equip it and use it cast on death and use a normal portal scroll for you after you finish the map. Then I also like to use blood rage. 
This is a buff that grants more attack speed. You can, uh, if you have a six links for a bob, you can put here blood rage. And while you hit with frenzy, you will automatically get blood rage without you clicking it. But you need a six link. If you don't have a six link, just put it in the gloves. Now we get into the juicy part. In my build variation, I like to go for Grace Aura. Uh, I always say not getting hit is the best defense. If uh, I equip Grace and uh, I activate it, I go to my defenses, you will see that I have estimated chance to evade attack 77%. Uh, okay, man, this is nuts. So I barely get hit. That's why I'm so tanky. I appear tanky because I barely get hit. Also notice my physical damage reduction. When I summon all my totems, I have 70, 67. Also, I get more from the Pantheon. So I won't have any problems with uh, physical mitigation. Because some of you ask me why I have so low armor. Because I get a lot from the totems, I don't need more. I focus on uh, chance to evade attacks. So I like not bad getting hit. Here, uh, if you start mapping uh, white maps, you might want to have in your off hands these gems and level them. So when you equip them, they are at least level 15 or something like that. Don't buy them level 1 directly, you know? And you will put a purity of elements and grace. You can buy them from Lily. For your main gem setup, I like to socket them into the chest. The reason I do this is because the chest can have two corruptions. One is one to level of socketed gems, which I have it right now on me. And the other is plus two of projectile gems. What this does, uh, this is the Siege Ballista gem. It's level 21. At level 22, you get one extra maximum number of summon totems. So if I soak it in, the, in uh, such an armor, you see, I get one more extra totem. So it's ideal if you can find such an armor with plus one of socketed gems. This will, you will do later, because at the start of the leave, everyone will be poor, you know? Now I'll show you my setup. So you want this, Siege Ballista. Uh, make sure you have a high level. You want to have this minimum level 20. When you start mapping, you should have it leveled up. Don't buy one from Lily for uh, level one, because it, it you will do zero damage and it will die instantly. So while you're doing the campaign, try to put in your offhand, one moment, uh, try to level some Siege Ballistas, you know, you put them in your offhand. And after you finish the campaign, you switch and you equip it already leveled up. Okay, so for your main setup, you will do like this. Uh, let's buy fresh from Lily so you understand better. You'll buy Siege Ballista. Okay, we buy Siege Ballista. You need Life Tap. This is mandatory because you'll have 100% uh, uh, mana reservation. You will need faster attacks. Okay, you will need uh, added cold damage. Ooh, where it is here? Okay, so now you have a four link. Uh, most of you, when you start white maps, you'll have a five link. Few will have a six link. So for the five link, you will do like this. Because we don't use the Reign of Splinters, it will be crazy expensive and uh, you don't have access to a lot of skill points, you will buy this, Lesser Multiple Projectiles. So this is your five link setup. Okay, so for the six link, you want to buy this. It's called Elemental Damage with Attacks. So let's say you buy or you find the six link in your maps. It ideally would be a brace crap. You get it to six link and you will use this elemental damage with attacks as your last uh, gem. This gem setup is for leak start and white maps. For the end game later when you are more rich and you have more levels, as you can see I'm level 97, you can switch to this gem setup that I will show you in a moment. This gem setup, you will switch around level 85, 85 or so. It's your final gem setup, consists in, uh, one moment. So we have Siege Ballista, Faster Attacks, Awakened Added Cold Damage, Awakened Cold Penetration, Awakened Elemental Damage with Attacks, and Life Tap. So this will be your final setup. We remove uh, lesser multiple projectiles because we will use the thread of hope in a large ring or if we don't have the jewel we will manually take this master fletcher and we will go here and take this multi shot also the small um, passive skills are not that bad they give attack speed 5% is a lot so you can take manually you know if you don't have money for thread of hope when you have more levels you can use this final setup okay let's move on 
Okay, let's get into the juicy, juicy part. So this is the juicy part, it's the skill tree. We will talk about everything. Here you can customize it in so many ways. Here, before I started this uh, recording, I um, bought two split personalities. I removed the, this one, uh, the thread of hope in a large jewel, because on, upon leaf start, this will be very expensive and very rare. You need to defeat Sirius in order to get this jewel. So imagine that first day you, it won't be even up for sale, you know? So you'll need to take these notes manually. And I took it like that. Also, please know that I'm level 97. Upon leak start, you will be around level, let's say, 70, 80, something like that. So we need to remove some points. Keep in mind, look, with this setup, which is pretty... Okay, not, it's not cheap because of this jewel. Let's remove the jewel. As you can see, my dexterity is still good. 1,700, it's not bad. So yeah, we can do a budget build. I will do a leak start version for this. But uh, I wanted to show that you can have above 2,000 dexterity. <laughs> Okay, so I did some five ways, that's why I'm nine, level 97. Now you need to understand how this skill progression works. So let's start with the base. The touch of God! I removed all the passive so you can better understand how to allocate your points. Now that you already bought the items and you bought the gems and you have, have everything, it's time to understand better this build. So this is a dexterity stacker. Basically we stack dexterity and the more dexterity we have, the more damage we do and the more totems we summon. If you, you already didn't notice, if you look at the bow here, look at the last two lines, it says like this. One more totem for every 200 extra dexterity. So the more dexterity you have, the more totems you will have. There are a lot of synergies here that we will talk in the last part. For example, the bolts give you more life per dexterity. Also, there are nodes that will increase the damage of the totems by the number of dexterity you have. I'll explain everything after the skill points, so you better understand your build, because you want to understand what you have here and what you are doing. Let's start with the passives. Follow along and uh, do this in your uh, skill tree. Usually I take the points like this. These are essential. So you should have them no matter what. Okay, this is the first part. We start here. And one, one more thing. I'm assuming you have at least level 80 character, you know? This, not, this is not a leak start guide or leveling guide. I'm assuming you have already a Templar level 17 or 18. Yes? You can use Orb of Regrets, unspec everything and follow along with me now. Okay. Um, here, the first jewel socket, you will put this jewel, fluid motion. You look for a dexterity roll, which is closer to 24, if not 24. This is very cheap. We can check it right now. Look. For, let's put perfect. So, so perfect, this jewel perfect is 10, 20 kills. I'm sure many of you have 20, 10, 20 kills. So we will socket this here. What it does, it transforms these um, nodes, which usually give strength, into dexterity. And because we are a dexterity stacker, we need this. So this is essential. We move further. Follow along. We stop here. This node, this is um, again essential. Uh, he, he, this is very nice for dexterity stacker. Basically what it does. The more dexterity you have, the more chance to suppress you have. One moment, we go to defense tab. As you see, I have spell damage suppression chance 44. Which this is purely from the dexterity you have. And as we take nodes, notice, it's 44, yes? And as we take more nodes, this suppression spell chance will uh, increase. Now we have 46, it's, it's for free, which is nice. You also want to take these nodes here. And uh, you will see this uh, mastery point, which says 50% chance to suppress spell damage if equipped helmet, body, armor, gloves and boots have evasion rating. And guess what? They do. And we will abuse this point. So we take 50% more spell suppression for free. Already at 75. Beauty. We go on. Why not take this uh, basic jewel socket? We will take it. 
Okay, you go here. You take this. Okay, now we go at the bottom. We take this. Now we take these nodes, which uh, boost the damage of your totems and uh, make them more tanky. This. This is a very interesting uh, passive point, but we will discuss after we allocate the full... Uh, at the end we talk about this. Here you want to take skills that summon a totem, have chance 30% chance to summon two totems instead. Let's close this so you better see. Yeah? Now, um, here you want to put a, a medium cluster jewel that gives onslaught per totem summoned. This will give you permanent onslaught effect, which is crazy. You get it for free. For those who don't know, Onslaught um, gives you 20% more movement speed, more attack speed. Yeah, it's it's very nice and you get it for free. Okay, we apply points. And for the Watcher's Eye, uh, it's very important. Okay, the Cluster Jewel. You are interested in a Cluster Jewel with 4 or 5 passive skills. Don't buy 6 because you will need to allocate 2 small points. So again, adds 4 or adds 5 passive skills. Then you look for um, this node here, Sleepless Sentries. This will give you Onslaught. The other one doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, though you don't care about it. If you want to take Ancestral Leech, great. Okay. Now, for the Watcher's Eye, you buy Watcher's Eye. You're most interesting in this mode. Chance to evade attacks while affected by Grace. And you want to have a better roll. So I took perfect 8%. 7% is also good if it's too expensive. So you need a Watcher's Eye with chance to evade attacks while affected by Grace. Okay, let's proceed further. These nodes are Dexterity on steroids. Look, 40% Dexterity, 8 increased Dexterity. It's insane. And now we take this Mastery node, 5% increased attributes. We click OK and we check. Look, now we go here. We go up. We take these nodes here. Click apply. Now we go here. Take these nodes. Click apply. Ok. Now we focus on this area. This is an essential area and I'll explain you why. Follow along. You want to take this because a shit ton of life. You want to take this because it gives elemental resistances. You want to take this jewel slot here. Click apply. Okay, it's time to explain what are timeless jewels. I, most of you, I think you, you don't know. Okay, so you need a timeless jewel called Bruton Restraint. But the problem is this shit jewel has, uh, okay, so has some numbers, you see, 909. Which is mine, and after this video everyone will go for this jewel, and next league I'll have to pay 50 divines instead of one. But this is the risk of uh, YouTubing my build. <laughs> you suck at it here. What it does? It adds some more dexterity to the small nodes, you see, you get two dexterity per small node, and the big nodes get some special effects. For example, here I have a special effect of extra 5% increased dexterity, here, 5% increased dexterity, here, 5% increased dexterity, and this stack up, and your dexterity goes up by a lot. This is essential. Such a jewel is essential. Uh, I also like to take these nodes. Look, here we have 4% maximum life. We go here, more 5% dexterity. It's essential. If you are a noob and don't know how to get a timeless jewel like mine, I will write in the description some trade links, maybe 5 or 10, and you check them out, which all those jewels are great. Again, you want to take a timeless jewel with uh, dexterity nodes on essential passives that you already take. For example, this one, all these are useful and you want to have the benefits on this. L look, so I have 5% increased dexterity here, 5% increased dexterity here, 50%, 20%, 25%, and some maximum life, and increased flash charges gain. This is nuts, this is insane. Yeah, okay, I'll write in the description some uh, jewel links for noobs. So if you don't know how to get a timeless jewel with a good seed, because if you buy Brutal Restraint and doesn't have a good uh, seed, it's shit. You want with dexterity on them. 
Okay, let's proceed. This was the hardest part, in my opinion, for new players. Now we go to the top. Okay, once we are here, we allocate this jewel socket. And you will want this. Thread of hope. Look here, you want only effects passive in large ring. You socket. This is ideal for bow builds or totem ballistas. Because it gives you access to this node, which says bow attacks fire addition arrow, which is uh, great. Also here you get another projectiles. So you shoot two more projectiles with this node which improve your clear speed by a lot. I also like to take this note because it gives a critical strike chance. You can also take this small one because it gives uh, more damage and more elemental resistances which you need. Also take this note because why not? Yeah, and we stop here. We can apply. What I'm saying now, if you are poor and you can't afford one in large ring, because if you look here, it's free divines, maybe it, if it has shit rolls, let's say one with shit rolls. Okay, we should rolls maybe it's two divines, but let's say you're poor and you cannot afford one, or maybe it's leak start, it's the first week, and this jewel will be like 10 divines, and you don't have money for this. Don't, don't despair, okay, let's uh, take this back, and you have two options. The first option is to ignore this jewel here, and go straight for this bow attacks fire additional arrow, and this, but this will waste a lot of... Um, skill points you see I wasted a lot and you take this too the second option let's uh, inspect this back the second option is and is the one I use on my leak start you go to Lily my girl Hail, God and you go here to support James and you take this lesser multiple projectiles and you replace with uh, faster attacks be sure to take a level 21 20 quality because uh, this, uh, this thing uh, decreases your projectile damage, so you want to have a level 21 or 20. And you put here. And this will solve your problem. You, your, project, your totems will shoot less often, but they will shoot more projectiles, which is great for clear speed. So this will solve your problems. Also, you will have much more points left. But as you level up, as you see, I'm level 97. I leave in the end of the video how to level up faster. Maybe you want to do that. You will have plenty of uh, passive points left. Okay, but I like to use this jewel and we will use it. I'll put back this, open the skill tree, and I'll take back my jewel. Again, we want large ring. We put it, take the essential nodes. Okay, and this, and this, and... Okay, this. You will want also to take this point here which is essential because you have gives access to this mastery point which it says increased projectile damage per 60 dexterity this is essential i forgot to say yes so this one you need to take it apply it this is essential you must take this one okay let's see what else you can take i also like to take these notes here which give extra spell suppress uh, chance, but the important one is this one. Life flash gain free change when you suppress spell damage. And you suppress spell damage a lot, so you always have your life uh, flask up because of this. I also like to abuse this point because they added new mastery points. So this uh, chest does not have life. And we can abuse this by taking this note. 50% increase maximum life if there are no life modifiers on your chest. Look at my life. We take this node. Bam. 300 extra life This is another keystone that we will take it's called point blank What it does is the closer you are to the monsters the more damage you do and usually with uh, your Rambo playstyle, You know you go and put the totems in the face of the monsters. You will do more damage So 30% more damage is a lot Also, if you fight a boss you make sure you put the totems closer to the boss so it, they deal more damage So take point blank As you level up, you will get more uh, skill points. You see, because I'm level 97, I have a lot of free extra skill points. So, let's say you did some 5 waves and you have extra skill points. I prefer to take these nodes, because they give uh, a lot of evasion rating, armor, more onslaught effect, which is great. It boosts your damage and defenses. So I take this. I also like to take some knife, life nodes. These are the best life nodes in this area, because they give 6% maximum life. So you might want to take this also. Check my life, I'm close to 5,000. 
maybe if you want to spend your last points, you, this is uh, optional. You take what you want. Maybe you want more life. You take this. Uh, but I suggest you take these life nodes because it improves the amount of life healed from your flask. So I suggest you take this one instead. There are many possibilities here. You can take um, whatever you want. Also, I forgot to tell, we took this uh, mastery point here. We check our spell suppression and we see it's 100%. But uh, because we have a lot of dexterity at the moment, I think we don't need this anymore. You see, I removed it and spell suppression is still 100%. So you can remove this if you have enough dexterity, because Mage Bane here will um, cap your spell suppression and invest it in something else. There are plenty of nodes again. If you want damage, you can take this small one here. You can even take this ones, elemental damage in attacks. Let's say. Okay, this is also good. Increase effect of non-damaging ailments so you can uh, freeze the monsters for more mini seconds. It's good, yes. You can take this ones, yes. But again, this is personal preference. You look at your build, you see your resistances, you see if you lack uh, stats. If you want more dexterity, I told you, you invest in a better jewel. Or you take the small ones, you know, projectile damage, for example. It also gives dexterity because of the timeless jewel. And you, you take this and it pumps your dexterity also. Okay, now we check out dexterity. Uh, remember that this bow gives uh, an extra totem per uh, each 200 dexterity. So you want to have to stop at a place where you get an extra totem. For example, if I had like uh, 1562, then I would look for dexterity nodes here to get the next totem. One moment. You can type here in the search bar and uh, see what nodes give dexterity. I took them, most of them, yeah. But uh, because of these jewels, you can take uh, small ones. You know, you can take this uh, life node, which has on top four dexterity, and it's add it added up. Also, the dexterity works with these items, because if you read here, it says increased elemental damage per, per 10 dexterity. Here, it says uh, adds uh, one to two cold damage per 10 dexterity. So these items are insane, because you get more damage. Here again, read in 1% increased damage per 15 dexterity. So, the more dexterity you have, the more damage you have, which is great. Okay, let's stop with these passives, because uh, I'm pretty sure you won't be level 97 like me, and you will lack a lot of points. Okay, so after you did everything here that we got, here you have a jewel socket. You will go and put a rare jewel <coughs> with some life and dexterity. If you need some resistances, you can add that too. So basic jewel with life and dexterity and some resistance if you need it. Okay, let's look at the uh, ascendancy. As you know, in Path of Exile, each character has a special ascendancy which gives strong passive points. So for this, we will use Hierophant. Hierophant is the best for uh, brands and totem spells. This is our grandpa, look. He has a stick in fire, he has a beard, and his eyes look like he's crazy. <clears throat> okay, so we will take in this order. On the first lab, you will take this, Pursuit of Fate. This gives one extra totem and 100% increased totem play spell speed, which is insane. Also, increased totem duration is great. Next one, you will take this, Ritual of Awakening. This one is insane because you get right here. 5% more damage per summon totem, stronger effect than increased. So this one will multiply a lot. If you have the more totems you have, the more damage will do. This passive alone is the most overpowered thing in this uh, ascendancy. Also, it gives uh, extreme life regeneration. So read here, you and your totems gain 1% life regenerator for each summon totem. So you get 1% of your maximum life, which is very important, per totem. So if you have 16 totems, you get 60% life regeneration. That's almost close to a life flask that's always active. So your life, look here, no, we'll do it like this. Check my life. We have here life regeneration per second. At the moment I have 190. Look at this as I summon totems. So just because of the totems, I have 1000 life regenerated per second. That is insane. You will always have your life full. 
this build is nuts, I'm telling you. Now you take uh, the last uh, passive, which is Conviction of Powers, gives you permanently 4 minimum endurance charges, 4 minimum power charges. Look here. For those who don't know, this gives uh, more crit and this gives um, physical damage reduction and some uh, resistances, which is nuts. Look, I have 60% just from the ascendancy. Plus, if I when I summon my totems, look at my armor. Estimated physical damage uh, reduction. <laughs> now it's 67 from nothing. Just because the more totems you summon, the more armor you get. This is because of this uh, node at the bottom, which is called Iron Node. The last line says 150 armor per summon totem. This build is nuts, I repeat, it's crazy, it's crazy good. Okay, you have one more lap to do, but the sad part is all the other ascendancy points suck. They do nothing. You don't need mana, so you don't need increased maximum, you don't need mana regen. Everything is useless. You don't need brand because you don't use brands. Arcane Surge is useless. So you you are uh, okay to go with three laps. You don't need to do the last lap. If you are lazy, don't do it. Let's move to the Pantheon. This is the Pantheon. Uh, I suggest you go for Soul of Lunaris and use this uh, shit. One moment. <coughs> okay, so use Divine Vessels to unlock uh, the next step. So you need to capture the bird to have 10% chance to avoid projectiles, capture core to get more elemental damage reduction, <coughs> which is great, capture um, Captain Claiborne uh, to avoid pro projectile that chain. All this stack up <coughs> and make you more tanky, okay. You also look at the top, you get more movement speed, more physical damage reduction for nearby enemies. And in maps, you will be surrounded by enemies. So you add... Um, so you are to 67, you are at 8. Now, and now you are to 75% uh, damage reduction. <coughs> Crazy. Okay. Uh, last thing are the bandits. You know, in, uh, in Act uh, 2, you need to kill some bandits. And um, if you kill all, you will get two more skill points. And uh, you need to kill all, so you get those two extra skill points. Because uh, in this build, skill points are uh, a must. The more you have, the better. Okay, so after you complete the build, you check again your Pantheon, make sure you unlock uh, this shit. Then uh, I suggest you capture Megara because uh, it gives unaffected by burning ground. Also gives movement speed while burning ground. This is very nice, you can take this one. Okay, uh, let's uh, open a map and see, because this is a very budget build, you know? Let's see how this very budget build in a map. I'll take a Crimson Temple. Now again, if you suck, you just install Path of Excel, you are very new to the game. I suggest you do it like this. You scour it, so it's white. Apply uh, some chisel, so it has some item quantity. Item quantity, more items drop. And don't apply an alchemy orb if you suck. Put uh, this. Orb of Transmutation. Okay? Uh, you know, something little. You improve the item quantity by 13%, so 33%. I will run it like that. If you suck, if you suck, you are bad. You need to get familiar with the modifiers. So you know which modifiers are bad, which are good. I can make a video on that if you want. Okay, but before I make that video, open the map and, and let's test it. So you should have this. If you followed along with me, you should have the same result. Okay, let's see how this build uh, performs. Let's take the Lyrium. Okay. Uh, because we uh, took gems from Lily, this will uh, need to be leveled up, but no problem. Mm, I, I have shattering. There was a patch, I told you. Yesterday morning there was a patch and they uh, upgraded the video components and I need to reconfigure my graphic card, which I didn't do. But uh, now it's okay. Okay. Again, this build is very budget. Budget, like extremely budget. It's it's great. It has a delirium layer and the damage is great. Also, as we level these gems, uh, it will be better. A little. You can uh, apply your flask from time to time. 
the clear speed is great, insane. Look, this is, um, I'm not exaggerating, this is a divine build, maybe six. Ah, it's too good. I'm curious the map boss, how fast uh, will he die? Look at this, look at this! <coughs> okay, let's uh, level up some more. Maybe we get some good loot, you never know. Come on. Come on, don't be shy. Oh my god, so good. Six divine build. So much damage. Let's see the boss, how fast he dies. It's okay. Not bad. Okay, so this was a 6-8 divine orb build. And now let's go into the upgrades. What we can upgrade to take this build to the next level. This build can pump some insane damage. You can uh, kill the boss in less than one second. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so this build has a lot of potential upgrades. You can uh, mid-max this uh, insanely good. Let's start here. Let's look at each item and see what we can upgrade. Okay, so let's start with the helmet. The helmet can have um, enchants, as you know, and this one is the best. Siege Ballista has 50% increased attack speed. So if you can get a helmet with this uh, enchant, even better. Also, you can get with enchant and corruption. You can get... Um, uh, the mana multiplier corruption, you can get the plus, uh, plus two AOE gems, plus two duration gems, plus two aura gems, uh, which affect your um, purity of elements or uh, grace, which is nice because you get more dodge and you get more uh, elemental resistances, so you can do that. But uh, it's, uh, f you can also put an enlightened gem, you know, you can uh, put two blue sockets, a socket and enlightened gem, and use maybe defiance banner which gives more armor and more uh, uh, dodge chance, like 2%. Okay, let's see here for the amulet. If you, again, if you are noob, stick with Astra Mantis, because, because if you remove this, you will have problems with attributes. I prefer to use this amulet because it gives a cooling strike, uh, also gives precision aura uh, that you can use because I allocated Charisma Enchant. So, as you will see, I can use uh, level 30 precision aura, which gives more critical strike chance, also gives global critical strike multiplier, and look how much dexterity it gives. It's close to the Nastra Mantis in terms of dexterity. So after you get used to your build, try to use this, here is truth. <coughs> uh, one moment, for the amulet I forgot to say, you need to use oils and put allocate shaman's dominion. So you want this uh, enchant for the amulet. Okay, let's move further. For the bow, you're looking for a bow with 20% increased attack speed. Don't look at corruptions, because increased a critical strike chance is the best. Usually you will need to do like this, buy a random one with 20% attack speed and use blessed orbs and get uh, an implicit closer to 50. You will need to do some, bro. <laughs> okay, okay, if you hit 50, it's great. We keep it like this. Okay, for the quiver. For the quiver, same. You can take uh, and uh, use blessed orbs to get 30 or close to 30. One moment. <coughs> okay, 30 is perfect. Or you can get with corruptions. You can get uh, bow attacks fire an additional arrow, which is the best, the best of the best. Or you can get a cheap one like I have here. Uh, you know, added cold damage. Uh, it uh, because of all the increased elemental damage, this added cold damage multiplies. So it's much better. Okay, with the quiver like this. Let's say I told you you can use um, fractal tots with uh, the enchant, 50 percent increased attack speed. So I'm gonna use that because I have it. Also, if you notice, I have perfect critical strike multiplier. <coughs> okay, for the gloves, I use uh, Hrim Sorrow with uh, increased attack speed. You can also use the uh, corruption, which gives attack save. 7% uh, critical strike chance, it varies from uh, 6 to 8, something like that. Okay, this has 4 sockets, let's fix it. You can also bump the quality, 
It gives more evasion rating, so pumps your dodge chance. Let's make this four socket. One moment. Okay. I'll need to link it. Like this. And now we put uh, the gems. Okay, so this 9% uh, attack speed helps. Uh, perfect roll is 10%. If you can get 10%, even better. Now we look at the boots. Here um, you can get... Um, there are various uh, corruptions that are useful. Even life uh, while moving is useful, or movement speed. You can get even more movement speed. There is a corruption that gives 10% movement speed. Now for the rings, you want synthesized rings with uh, increased dexterity implicit. But the set part is, uh, they are very expensive. I think uh, they are above 10 divines, 10, 20 divines. After you buy one, you can roll it yourself with essences. I don't know, I don't want to get this too complicated, you know, because uh, some of you are very noob. Look, this essence, is, uh, read here, it says other item, it gives 51, 58 dexterity. And this is how I crafted my belt, by the way. If you see, I didn't use uh, this shit belt. I used this belt, it's a synthesized item, I took it, I applied some uh, catalyst to bump the dexterity even more. Uh, you know what, let's craft one right now, so you know. So I bought this from the trade website, I paid one divine, just for the implicit. Let's craft it. So the first thing you wanna do, you wanna buy some deafening essence of sorrow, because it gives dexterity, and you click. <laughs> Okay, we, uh, uh, this one is great, because it has uh, tier 1 life, yeah, tier 1 life, uh, yeah, also has uh, increased flash duration level 1, wow, I was very lucky, man, on first try, usually you won't get it on first try, you need to use multiple, after you're happy with uh, what you got, you go to the craft bench and try to craft something, you know, you can put this to pump your damage, uh, closer to 32, come on, Come on, bitch, I'm doing video. Okay, 31. This is good enough. Then, after you craft it, you go to Metamorph, use uh, Intrinsic Catalyst to pump up the dexterity. And just like this, you made a better belt than this shit. Much better. <clears throat> so this is an upgrade. You can also go to the Special Labyrinth, which is... Um, yeah, is this uh, one moment? Yeah, it's here. Is dedication of the goddess. <clears throat> you run it and uh, it lets you enchant your belt. There are some pretty useful enchants. Okay, let's see what you can upgrade here because it's crucible. Like, you can get uh, crucible passives that offer dexterity or increased attributes, which is great because they pump up your dexterity even more. <clears throat> okay, let's see what you can do further. Yeah, and later you will have more dexterity, <coughs> and you can uh, try my uh, first gem setup for the Auras. I told you, you can go for Purity of Elements and Grace, or you can go for Hatred, uh, this one, Hatred and uh, Grace. And if you go for this, you will need Ancestral Vision, and you will socket it here. This will give you Elemental Element Immunity. <coughs> okay, you need more dexterity. Or, and if you miss some uh, immunity, you can take these nodes. Look. Pumps. After you get more uh, dexterity, you can't do this. But if you are noob and you suck, stick to the first gem setup. You know, you use just uh, purity of elements and gray sour. Okay. So you can do this. You can also upgrade your watcher size, of course. <clears throat> if you see here, I have uh, I want it to be cheap as possible. I have uh, just one modifier, but... You can get chance to evade attacks and something uh, nice, you know, like increased damage while affected by precision or attack speed increased uh, while affected by precision. There are many, you know. Uh, there's even uh, chaos resistance while affected by purity of elements. Uh, there are many options here. You know, you you see what you can buy. You know, depends on your budget. <coughs> yes. Also, this medium cluster jewel can have. Uh, Look, mine has uh, attributes and dexterity, which is great. You can get it uh, with dexterity, which pumps your dexterity further. <coughs> okay. If your uh, Brutal Restraint sucks, uh, I'm talking about a jewel, you can upgrade it, gather more divines and buy a better one. You can also upgrade your gems. You know, we have Awakened gems, so 
you can put uh, the Waken version of the gems, especially in your main setup. Uh, Awaken the elemental damage with attack support also gives uh, <coughs> elemental damage from support that skills cannot be reflected. Uh, this is great because you have one less modifier to worry about, you know? Also, the Awaken gems uh, give more damage, so it's also nice. Here, I want to give you a tip. You can take Anomalous Dash, which uh, lets you to dash a further distance. I prefer Anomalous Dash, so you might want to take that one. For Frenzy, you can buy Anomalous Frenzy. Uh, it will... Uh, if you put 20 quality on Anomalous Frenzy, it will give you an additional projectile when you attack with Frenzy, which helps to trigger the Frenzy charges march more often. So you can do that, yes. For the Golem, you want Anomalous uh, Summon Flame Golem because it gives more um, buff effect. Buff effect increases your damage even further, so you want to take that. Also for Purity of Elements, you have Anomalous Purity of Elements and gives more elemental resistances. Uh, on quality. It's great if you, let's say, you have um, 73 lighting resistance or 70, you buy Anomalous uh, Purity of Elements and it will, it will cap it. So if you lack resistance, try to buy Anomalous. Uh, what else? Uh, now look at the chest. Uh, the chest can have great corruptions. The best corruption for this chest is plus one of socketic gems because makes all gems one level bigger which is, uh, translates to more damage. Also, the big uh, point is the Siege Ballista. Siege Ballista, when he, it gets level 22, receives one extra totem. So, for example, if you don't have this corruption and you summon all your totems, you will have 15 totems. You won't have 16 like me. I have 16 because I have these corruptions, which uh, makes my Siege Ballista level 22. So, you can reach level 22 uh, in three ways. The first way is um, to corrupt your brisk crop with uh, plus one level of socket gem. The second way is, you see, it has projectile tag. So you corrupt it with uh, plus two projectile gems. This will make it level 23 and uh, it will guarantee another uh, totem. The third way is a very complex one and it's um, very expensive for you, so I don't suggest to do it. It's to buy a rare amulet. With, um, with influence that has increased dexterity, increased attributes. Uh, you know, I suggest you stay away from this uh, method because it's uh, very expensive. So you just buy a brisk wrap with plus one socket gems or plus two projectile gems, and this will grant you one extra totem. Also, in some special leagues, for example, we had uh, Sanctum League um, last time, there were relics where you could uh, allocate some extra keystones. And if you can, I don't know, in the future league, you allocate this keystone ancestral bond, this will give you an extra totem. So always keep in mind that you can get this uh, keystone with the league mechanic. We don't know the next league what will offer, but if uh, there's a possibility to get ancestral bond, take it. Last thing I want to show you. So our main uh, skill gem is called Siege Ballist, but we have a more powerful one, especially if you get let's say this enchant or you get uh, the corruption with attack speed, you can opt for a better gem. One moment, I want to see if I have it. Yeah, I have it. It's called Anomalous Siege Ballista. So what this does on quality, it, uh, it provides two additional projectiles for free, but on the downside it reduces attack speed. So if you have enough attack speed, even if you get just one corruption with attack speed on Hrim Sorrow, you will buy this, Anomalous Siege Ballista. Be sure to be level 21. An Anomalous Siege Ballista for level 21, I think it's a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's like five divines. So keep in mind that you will buy this later in the league. Start with uh, Siege Ballista level 21, 20, and later when you are rich, uh, because of my guide, <laughs> you will buy Anomalous Siege Ballista for two additional projectiles, which is great. I really hope this build will help you. I play Petal Exile for like five years, a lot. In all my years, this is the best build I have ever seen. It's noob friendly, does a lot of damage. It's fairly tanky, has a lot of life. It's great, has element immunity. You have uh, spell, you are capped with spell suppression. You also have a lot of armor. This build, it's nuts. <clears throat> I suggest you use it, try it. If you have a friend which sucks at P Path of Exile, show him this guide and he will appreciate it. I want to talk about two more things before we go into the leak start version. Okay, first let's allocate this so we better understand. Okay, first one is this jewel. 
this jewel is very cheap, uh, can be very cheap and it awards a lot of dexterity. Basically, you want, this jewel, how it works. The further away from your starting point you place it, the more dexterity it gives. Usually it will give around 40 dexterity, so it's not a big deal if you place it here for dexterity, you see 40, or here. Here you get 43, you see it's not a big deal. Around 40, which is great, you get 40 dexterity, it's nice. Also you can get a secondary modifier. Uh, a lot of build guides for um, dexterity stacking say that you need to let dexterity a maximum life but these two modifiers on this sp dual split personality can be very expensive that's why to buy budget you will search like this 5 dexterity and 40 to evasion rating or 40 to armor these are the cheap versions and don't worry you get like 40 life that's not a lot you don't worry about it you don't lose nothing see 40 life so if this is too expensive, you will buy one with 40 to evasion rating or 40 armor. Upon leak start, this jewel won't be available because you need to do simulacrums. So this jewel will appear like uh, on day three or on day four, something like that will be very expensive. Later you can upgrade by buying this jewel. So this is one of the things that I want you to tell you. You can buy two. So you can have two of these jewels. You're limited to two, read here, limited to two jewels. The other thing I want to talk about, uh, some guys keep yelling, oh, you have uh, minus 60 chaos resistance. Hey, okay, boys, listen. If you plan doing just tier 16 maps, please know that few monsters do chaos damage. Main source of chaos damage will be poison. Some maps will have desecrating ground or something like that. Then you want to take this note, Soul of Shaokari, and capture Terror of the Infinite Drifts. This will help with chaos mitigation, but again, few monsters in tier 16 maps or in maps do chaos damage. Da? So we are good with minus 60, you don't have nothing to worry about. If you go for special content or something like that, maybe this will be a problem. Also, you get a lot of life regeneration. With the skill points and the totems that you summon, you'll get crazy life regeneration. So you don't have to worry about this uh, thing here, you will be fine. But if you really want to have chaos resistance, you can buy more rings. You know, you get some chaos resistance on this ring, chaos resistance on these rings, because anyway, we have, look here way too much cold resistant, you know, you lower core resistance, get more chaos. Also, there's a modifier for the watch's eyes. We, we use purity of elements aura. And there's a modifier that says you get uh, chaos resistance while affected by purity of elements. Ideally, you want to get chance to evade attacks while affected by grace and chaos resistance while affected by purity of elements. You, if you have these two modifiers, you will feel great. You will have like 20 chaos resistance, which is more than enough. Okay, now because we got this out of the way, we will uh, go into the leak start section. Let's go. Okay, so I moved to standard. I want to show you how to leak start, how to allocate the skills while you leak start. I will also demonstrate this in practice. So I'll make a video with a new character and I'll progress through the campaign and I'll show you the important steps that you need to take. But I need to say something. There are multiple ways you can leak start this. Usually I like to go for a greedy approach. Greedy approach means I go with the skills like this. One moment. So I'm advancing like this. I go here. I take this here. I take ancestral bond. Then I go uh, directly into my siege ballista build. Directly into this. Why I do this? Because I play in a party. And basically the other players are carrying my ass. Last league I uh, league started like this. You know, I just took this ancestral bond. I went the holy fire totem. And I stood holy fire totem and uh, I kept progressing towards my ballista build. I was basically useless, but my team had no clue about this. Uh, they really believed I do damage, but my damage sucked. I was doing like 1% uh, of damage and they carried my ass to the campaign. But at the end, when I finished the acts, I, I was already using siege ballista. You know, I bought uh, my items during the campaign because I <coughs> I had trade website up <coughs> always scanning for the items that I need I'm sure mo many of you don't want to do it like this maybe you want to kill uh, stuff yourself maybe you don't want to play in a party <coughs> but again if you want to listen to me play in a party because you have just advantages <coughs> you finish the campaign much more faster they carry your ass as they progress you will progress with them but <coughs> we will do it the other way so there's one more way you can progress to the campaign and that is uh, using um, explosive ballistas and we will do it like that and in this video that i will show you my progression towards the campaign i will use uh, explosive arrow ballista after we hit act 10 then we'll do the swap to siege arrow ballista uh, the main focus is that you need to get some accuracy in the campaign so or in white maps so you can do the transition but as i told you there are some core items 
Look, this bow is mandatory. Also these gloves. The nice part is that these are cheap. It's one kilos, maybe five kilos. They, these are very cheap uniques. The rest are not mandatory. You can uh, buy them as you get currency, you know? Okay, I hope you got an understanding. Now I will uh, create a new character and I will level up from scratch. Uh, I will speed up the video so you don't waste a lot of time. Okay, let's jump into it right now.
before the goddess of justice. You are worthy. Receive our blessings, embrace our gifts, and rise, Ascendant. For this is the ending that we all deserve.
wise ascendant, for this is the ending that we all deserve.
receive our blessings, embrace our gifts, and rise ascendant. For this is the ending that we all deserve.
goddess of justice, you are worthy. Receive our blessings, embrace our gifts, and rise ascendant. For this is the ending that we all deserve.
before the goddess of justice, you are worthy. Receive our blessings, embrace our gifts, and rise, Ascendant. For this is the ending that we all deserve. everyone so we got to this point we unlocked our first ascendancy we got one maximum number of summon totems and read here increase totem placement speed so we will place the totems extremely fast we have five totems more than enough you will be fine so you will stay like this you will use the same gem setup explosive arrow ballista totem support elemental damage with attacks multiple projectors you will use this setup until act 10 the damage is extremely insane you can do white maps with four link socket and this skill set up at the top. Then you will progress for normal Siege Ballista. And when you get your Iron Commander bow and Hrimsoro boots and some of the other pieces, you can do the transition. You will need some refund points. Uh, there are some side quests that grant uh, more refund points. Also, there is Orb of Regrets that you will find naturally while you progress. And you will inspect these points at the top. And you will go full mode into Siege Ballista very easy to transition to make it much more easier for you i will include the path of building uh, skill tree for leveling and uh, the transition if you don't know what's path of building it's okay i'll uh, post some screenshots here in case you don't want to install that program so everything will be easy for you now i want to show you how overpowered this build is we'll go do the dareso boss and you'll see live uh, okay not live on this recording how much damage i do one moment so we will put like this. On a four link, you will destroy the campaign with this setup. Be sure to activate your auras. As you can see, I use flammability curse. This will make uh, the enemies take more fire damage. It's very nice. Also, you have frenzy to get attack speed, more attack speed. You know? Look at this damage. Look at this damage, and you will do this even in white maps. And uh, as your gem and also your gems level up, you'll do more damage naturally. Also, you can um, improve your gear. If you see now, I took a random bow. Look, a random bow, a random uh, quiver. You will find much better items in the campaign. Much better items. Your damage will go nuts. Look, the clear is excellent. The hard part was the uh, summon holy fire totem. That was the shit part. But this is uh, is extremely pleasurable. You will enjoy this build. Look, great damage. And you will do the campaign. Again, you will play in a party, most likely. And uh, after you get to Act 9 or 10, you buy your Iron Commander and Crimson Sorrow. And you switch to Siege Ballist. I will shut up so you can enjoy this gameplay. Let's go.
Okay, everyone, I want to say something more. Uh, I remember during the fight. So we have precision aura, okay? We use precision aura for more critical strike chance. Also, this one triggers often because of precision. So we need that. Also, keep in mind that this one is big. Some quivers, you will say, um, arrows pierce additional target. Don't buy that quiver. If you have any pierce source, all your ballista setup will do less damage or close to nothing. So make sure you don't have a pierce quiver. You don't want pierce. On this, uh, when you play explosive arrow ballista, you don't want any pierce source. So keep that in mind. Okay, I'll put on the screen uh, after this uh, the leveling process for s those who don't want to install path of building. Okay, I'm done. In the path of building you will have for the end game, for the leak start and for the leveling. <coughs> this is for the end game. When you reach tier 16 maps and you have some currency, you can buy a trade of hope. You will buy a good uh, brutal restraint. This is for leak start. When you reach white maps, as you see, I didn't put anything here because uh, most likely you won't have a timeless jewel. Same here, you, I don't have anything. And uh, this is for leak start. So let's see what we have. When you start a fresh uh, new character, you will take these nodes here, then progress up, take these nodes. <coughs> then you will have two holy flame totems, you take ancestral bomb. Then after you prepared for the transition with explosive arrow ballista, you take this. And uh, as you level from act, on act 4 you will transition to explosive arrow ballista and the uh, leveling will be much more smoother. So here is the tree for that. <coughs> Uh, you, the upper part will remain unchanged, mostly you will take new points as I showed you here. So you will go here, now you'll go down, you skip this part, you go down, you go here, take these nodes, put here, summon that uh, 30 chance to summon two totems instead, then go here and take this part, watch towers, because they give you one extra balisa totem, very important. And then you can take this part. When you will finish the campaign, you will go here and see what else you can take. There are multiple possibilities here. Uh, for example, maybe you will get more skill points and you can drop that lesser multiple projectiles that I taught you about in the gem setup and go for this. You'll go manually and take Master Fletcher and go here, take manually uh, this multi-shot. These, these are great because they also give 5% increased attack speed, which is not bad. It's not bad. And after, when you finished, you can check my end game setup tree and get inspiration from here. As you see, we have also two split personalities, one here, one here. We talked about everything here, so go rewatch my guide <coughs> to see if you miss something.